Wow, you are a living legend, man. Yes, I am. John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, John. What's going on, buddy? No, you're John. Huh? I'm just tired of applying your rules, and I'm telling you, they work. Tom, I love your show, man. It's always top of the class when it comes to any kind of media entertainment. You're the new king, man. All the girls that make the guys that they're dating wait to have sex are in the closet whores. In the closet whores. Definitely. Us males, we're out here. We're the alpha male. We're out here to take and get something. The women, they're out there to get something, too. And it's called money. That's all there is to it. Let me tell you something. I am honest about the word, and I don't know why we all playing. White people call black people niggas in the privacy of their own home, just like we call y'all crackers and hunkies. Everybody in this world is a little racist. You might not be smack a taco out of Mexican hand racist, but we are all a little racist and say it. It's the people like you that scare me the most. Those who deny it got rope and sheets in their house. I think this is a uh, legitimate purpose that fat chicks serve. Now, you don't want to be seen in public with them, don't want to be going on dates with them. You want to go to their place, knock it out, and get the hell out of there just to keep your uh, pitching arm warm. I want to thank you for your show. It's both entertaining and enlightening. Thank you. It's like PBS without the BS. <laughs> I got a bad headache. I think I had too many drinks. Boo-hoo-hoo. So, hoo. <laughs> what I said is, okay, uh, let's go for a ride real quick. I drove her ass right back to her house and said, <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you doing it? From Hollywood. Hey, the big man here. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas, you rat bastard. And now. And now. Here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones. On this Friday, anything can happen here. You have to make it happen, of course, by calling us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Let's jump right in. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? I'm doing Okay. Listen, everybody's talking about the economy, and you guys had a part on the show yesterday talking about what's going on and getting out of debt and that sort of thing, and I wanted to share the best way for everybody to be getting out of debt in uh, this economy. Go ahead. All right. So basically you have a home jar, you know, just a, a jar, and you collect every receipt, everything, even a stick of gum for the first 30 days. And at the end of the month, you take these receipts and categorize them into – groceries, so this is what I spent on fun, all these different categories. You can figure out from there what you can cut back on, what you didn't need to spend money on, but then also kind of what your monthly necessity expenses are. And then you figure what your monthly income is and figure 10% below that. And then from each category, when your necessities are, you have to figure out what you can use and live off of 10% below what your monthly income is. Take the extra 10% from your monthly income and apply it to the highest interest rate debt instrument that you that you have. And that way you'll slowly but surely pay down your debt from that. Yeah, well, that's certainly one good way to do it. Um, I use Quicken software. I've been using it for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it keeps track, uh, if you enter the information faithfully, of every purchase you make. Puts it into pie charts, graphs, tables. Uh, you know how much you're spending on everything. And Another it's a great way that. to figure out what uh, items to eliminate from the budget. Another great thing to add into that is a contraption called Neat Receipts. You can plug that in, and it's a nice little scanner, um, very small device. You can get it for less than 100 bucks, and you can scan in every receipt. And it's compatible with Quicken, and it will deposit these receipts into Quicken automatically. But then you also have... A, an electronic copy of the receipt. So not only does that work for your accountants, but when these receipts and the ink over time gets off them, you have a blank piece of paper or whatnot, or you lose the receipts, you have a copy of it. And almost every company that I've ever heard of will take a printed copy of the receipt 
for those purposes. Let me ask you a question. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, does that device also have optical character recognition? Like, uh, can it uh, figure out what the receipt says and enter the information for you? I'm not sure if it has the OCR, but as far as the purposes for what it's used for in, in um, entering the receipt information into Quicken, it can. Uh, so it probably does, but it's just, I mean, real quick and easy. You plug it in USB, slide the receipt in, it scans it through, and it will drop it into Quicken into the correct areas where you have it set up. Sounds good to me. Miguel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thank you for uh, taking my call. Sure. Hey, listen, um, I, have, uh, I have some money in Vanguard, okay? I had it. Vanguard. Wait, wait, wait. Vanguard what? Uh, it, it's it's four hundred one k Vanguard. Right, but okay. do you know what do you know what mutual funds the money is invested in? Uh, I don't have them in front of me. I have about seven seven of them because I just called the other day. Okay. Okay. I no longer work for this company where I had Vanguard. Now I work for somebody else. So, uh, in order for me to uh, um, keep using Vanguard. Um, I either have to change it to an IRA account with Vanguard, or I could take the money out and and put it in a, in a, in, a, in another bank. However, I've already lost a lot of money, you know, because uh, I haven't been paying attention to that. So my question to you: What's the best thing for me to do? Keep it in Vanguard, or switch it to another to a different bank? Well, first of all, if it's a four hundred one k you have, yes, it is, sir. Get it out of there. Even if you stay with Vanguard, get out of the 401k. And the reason is because 401ks charge all kinds of fees that IRAs don't. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, they are charging me a fee for uh, managing it for me. Instead right. of my managing it myself, they're doing it for me, and uh, I've, lost, I've lost some money. Yeah, well, then is it really worth it to pay a fee? You could lose money on your own without any advice from them. Okay, you're right about that. So uh, take it out of the 401k, keep it in Vanguard, but put it in an, IR, in an right, IRA. Right, but you have to make sure you do the proper transfer of assets so that it rolls right over into the IRA. Do not accept a check. Do not accept cash. Do not put it in the bank. Do not hold on to it. Do not borrow it to buy Christmas presents and plan on paying it back. It has to go directly from the 401k into a new IRA. Wow, okay, perfect. Well, thank you for taking my call. And, and by I the way, it's it. not Vanguard's fault that you lost money. Most I, I, mutual I, funds have lost money. I, I, I understand that. I understand that. It's just that uh, I, I went from uh, 38000 to 20000 and I was like, whoa. Yeah, well, it's almost half, and that's, uh, 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 no, it's more than half. No, no, it's almost half. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, the fact is uh, you shouldn't be paying a fee on top of that. Okay. All right, so I'll just call him back and just uh, get it get it out of the 401k, putting into an IRA account. Yes, indeed. Okay, Tom, thank you, and uh, enjoy your holidays. Same to you, Miguel. Thank you for the call. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Hey, Tom. It's a uh, big fan of the show. First time call. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I'm a uh, production assistant. Um, I work in TV, and... Um, the reason that I'm calling is because uh, I was wondering what your take on the um, Screen Actors Guild strike was um, and what your thoughts on that. I know you are a uh, SAG member, and um, it's just that uh, you're really not hearing a lot about it um, unless you're working in the industry. And um, I just wasn't sure if uh, what you thought you know, would happen. And um, Well, there's, no, uh, we're going to find out because the strike vote is coming. It's been authorized, and it's coming soon. And um, there is uh, a question uh, among uh, people in the industry about uh, whether SAG members will vote to strike with the economy being so lousy. Right. Uh, um, I know there are factions that uh, that want us to vote for a strike. Right. And uh, they say that, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, the one and only time we're going to have to speak out about uh, residuals. Uh, about uh, internet uh, and other new media uses of uh, material, repositioning, re repurposing of material. Right. And so, uh, you know, under normal circumstances, I think there would be a strike. I think right. there would be a vote for a strike. Uh, but what's throwing that into question is the depth of how bad the economy is. Right. 
Um, well, the thing is that scares me is that um, ordinarily I totally would agree with you on that. It's just that um, every uh, everybody I know who is in SAG um, is working a either a food service job or they have work um, outside of that guild. And, um, I mean, and it's just that, you know, I mean, and most people who are, you know, for this strike are used to going months without work anyway. And um, it's those people whom I'm talking to who are very um, for it. And um, well, I mean, keep I... in mind, those are always the people who are most likely to favor a strike. Right. The people who, who don't work full time or in anything close to full time. And the last time I heard a figure, 85 percent of the members of the Screen Actors Guild are part time at best. Right. Right. And I mean, I just feel that those people, I mean, they only need 75 percent for a strike authorization. Those are the people that are, are going to support it. When well, action- I think I, that's what I, you know what? I don't disagree with you. I think that's a possibility. Uh, most of these people are not working anyway. What right, do they right. have to lose? Exactly. And um, I mean, do you have any like thoughts or any advice? I mean, in terms of. If you're, you know, what to do in, in that situation, like, I mean, like, is there, I mean, because I'm new to the state. I mean, I'm not sure what unemployment, like, laws are or whatever. So, I mean, I don't know if I'm eligible for it or, you know, I mean. Well, I think just, I, I haven't uh, collected unemployment in California. All I can say about unemployment in California is that uh, uh, I, my understanding is that your unemployment benefit is based on how many weeks you've worked in the past year or six months and how much you right. got paid. Right, right. So well, if you've I'm, been unemployed since you got here, you may have a hard time claiming any unemployment benefits. Right. Oh, well, that's true. I mean, but I mean, I have been with the show for um, for quite a while. So hopefully, you know, something something happens. Um, and anyway, I would hope I would hope there are going to be some strike benefits too paid out by SAG. Oh, absolutely, that would be great. Yeah, but um, hopefully, I don't know. I mean, I just hope it doesn't happen because that's really going to be putting so many people out of work. That um, you know, big picture wise, I just think it's a terrible thing right well, now. Well, I happen to think that big companies right now, especially in the entertainment business, are taking full advantage right. of the fact that the economy is lousy and using it as the excuse. Uh, to do anything and everything up to and including putting Jay Leno on at 10 o'clock at night exactly, and, yeah. and, and saving NBC $100 million in production costs for right. dramatic shows like ER and others that cost several million dollars an episode. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, because it's, it's definitely going to be saving money. And I mean, it's, it's, but it's just terrible that, I mean, that's what TV's coming to. So well, uh, but by the way, I'm I'm not, I, I got to tell you something. I'm not so much being critical of NBC as just pointing it out as something that's happening during this economic downturn. Uh, because uh, let's face it, with DVRs and internet repurposing of material, mm-hmm. um, less and less people are watching network TV. Absolutely, I mean definitely. It's, it's HBO, Showtime. Those are the those are the networks. I, I, I talked about this the other day. There's a show that I have liked for a long time, Boston Legal. Right. And I was shocked to read in the paper the other day that, that it had its final episode because I've got ten episodes on my DVR that I haven't watched yet. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, and there's some very popular shows that are being just canceled. Um, Dirty But I'm going to watch. Here's the thing. I'm going to watch all those shows, uh-huh. but the networks will get no credit for my watching them. The advertisers right. will consider uh, my watching it a waste of time. Right. So you can see it's a very complicated situation that we're finding ourselves in. And my prediction many years ago, and I think it's coming true, is that one day there's going to be a million TV stations, each with 10 viewers. Mm-hmm. And nobody will be making any money at all. Right. And in radio, there's going to be, uh, you know, you're not just going to have your local radio station. You're going to have uh, stations coming in from the Internet and stations coming in on your iPhone and uh, pretty soon there'll be 10 million radio stations, each with 100 listeners. Right. But as long as it's Tom Likas, we'll be happy. So that doesn't well, matter. Well, and uh, that's that's my bottom line. I'm here, and, uh, you know, I'm a testament to the ongoing business of radio. And uh, I believe in radio, and that's why I'm sitting here. Absolutely great. Thanks, Tom. Can you blow me up? I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. One.
The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones on this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show with shorter commercial breaks. Just check it out for yourself. Don't forget our Saturday show, 2 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. It's 2 to 6 p.m. tomorrow on 97.1 FM Talk. If you don't live in SoCal and you can't hear it on a radio, go to blowmeuptom.com, click on the Listen Live button between 2 and 6 p.m. Pacific Time tomorrow. The Tom Likas Show now six days a week. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. How are you? How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Fantastic. Um, my uh, call is about, uh, you know, a couple months back when oil was uh, crazy prices and gas was, you know, people just couldn't put up with it and people were selling their SUVs. Uh, you did an airing when you were on the air and you're just watching your energy mutual fund, I mean, just go through the roof pretty much before your eyes and you just couldn't keep the lid on the thing. Now, my point in calling about the mutual fund, you, you always have people calling in asking, oh, where should I put my money, this, that, and the other. And, and I just want to get across the point, uh, not necessarily you don't have to tell me how much it's lost, but the point of a mutual fund. And if you have lost, the losses are minimal, correct? Uh, say that again. Uh, your, your energy mutual fund that you had, uh, that, you were watch, that you're watching, while you're on the air, and, you know, you're watching it go up and right. up. Yes. Now, mutual funds in general, they di- diversify. And that's, I mean, for the most part, if you're invested in one place, you lose so much money. You know, let's say, for instance, uh, GM. If you had money in GM, it plummeted. You know, you lost a lot of money. Whereas if you had a mu- and, you know invested in a mutual fund, uh, you can minimize those losses. And people yes. always ask you, you know, I think that's a, an excellent point and, and case in point in what you had in your, in your energy mutual fund, correct? Well, yes. I mean, uh, my energy mutual fund is down, as are all energy mutual funds, all of them. Right, all of them, uh, yes. Right. But the one I'm invested in, according to Morningstar, is 6.7 points ahead of the category. Wow. And that's the, you know, that's the key is finding the best fund in a category. And then by being in a mutual fund, you do spread your risk so that if one company goes belly up or has bad news, uh, the others, uh, you know, raise all boats. Right. Now, uh, in doing that, you know, people always see, I mean, this is a good case in point. You know, Tom is telling you, you know, this is, this is how it works and this is how it goes. It's not just, you know, just talking just to say it. And I'd just like to point that out, you know, that you, you set an example as usual. Um, for everyone else, and I'd like to thank you for that. Um, being in, you know, an investment firm, um, I'm just beginning, but I'd just like like to point that out, and I really do appreciate it. And, uh, and my fear, I, I'm glad you're bringing this up, because my fear is that a whole generation of people um, who have seen stock prices plummet uh, will stupidly avoid investing altogether or will say, see that, it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. But uh, as you know, after each big drop, whether it was 1929's big drop or 1987's big drop, uh, people who kept investing, people who stayed in it, ultimately made fortunes. Yes. That's because funny. because when a, when a mutual fund is down, uh, as, as the one I mentioned, uh, 43% it's down for this year. That means the mutual fund is on sale. At forty three percent off, mm-hmm. and and it means you have to keep with your program of investing, and not run in the other direction. If you know you've got a good mutual fund or you've got several good mutual funds, uh, you have to stay the course, and that's what I've done. Yes. Now, people, you know, they don't. For the most part, they don't. They don't follow. They get very scared, and they, they get to their head. What a lot of people don't understand about mutual funds as well is that you know it will ultimately almost always always pay dividends. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Now, in in some cases, you can't get taxed on it. it really depends on the type of uh, investment you have. 
But I think uh, it's very important that people know that, you know, stay invested. Um, and this ultimately, I think, what makes people, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. You know, that's why. Uh, well, know, it's it, because here's what poor people do. They buy real estate when everyone else is buying real estate. Uh, they run like the place is on fire when real estate goes down. And they do the same thing with stocks. After Apple goes to $138 a share, everybody wants to own it. Right. Then, then when it drops, everybody wants to get rid of it. But, but who's waiting there to buy those stocks when the prices go down? People like me. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you're great to listen to. I love listening to your show. I listen to it every day on the way to work. And I just appreciate everything. I appreciate you uh, spreading the word on the mutual funds. I really do. Oh, one more thing about that gentleman earlier, as far as uh, the interest rates are concerned, he said, you know, need to raise the interest rates. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I don't know if it was a Great Depression or whatnot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but during that time, didn't they raise interest rates and 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 that kind of like made it worse uh, for the most part? Yes, I, and I think raising interest rates would make it worse right now. I think we. We have to live with a certain amount of liquidity and a certain amount of devaluation at this time until things get fixed. All right, well, but, but I will say that because the other currencies of the world that matter to us, the British pound, the euro, and others, are also down uh, as much or more than the dollar, um, you know, we're really not suffering in comparison, and therefore it's not as bad as it seems. Okay, my last point. My last point I want to make is uh, a lot of people haven't really been focusing on the commercial side of real estate. Now we're starting to see that, of course, in a lot of places, a lot of food places. I, I, uh, I live in Irvine, and um, I'm watching. I mean, so many just regular food places, you know, shut down. Mervins, and, and the list goes on and on. But I think we have yet to realize that, you know, we don't know we're, we're, we're three, four, or five months behind of what, what's actually happening. By the way, uh, KB Toys filed for bankruptcy for the second time today. Uh, yeah, I, I, I noticed that. And you know what? As far as GM is concerned, I really, really just think they should have filed for bankruptcy to begin with. I mean, renegotiate your, your contracts with the unions, and it was just its so ridiculous. They should have learned from the airlines. Look at Delta Airlines when they got all that debt off their balance sheet by filing for bankruptcy. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just it's, it seems to me that they're just stubborn. They they don't want to, you know, they don't want to do it. Give in. It's, I don't know. But uh, again, I thank you for everything. Uh, keep doing what you're doing and keep the good fight. Can you take me out, uh, Kobe style, please? I certainly can, Robert. Um, <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number, and we continue with your telephone calls, Albert, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. All right, we'll uh, get Albert next, and instead we'll say hello here to Manny in San Francisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom, man? Not much. How you doing? Hey, I, at first got to say, um, I used to work for uh, Free FM when we used to carry you guys before we went belly up. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, man, so uh, hey, I used to listen to you all the time when they played you at like 1 in the morning and whatnot. But um, I have an idea what they should do with the uh, the bailout. Um, I think they should give the money to the car companies and to the uh, the uh, banks. But what they should do in exchange is, if you have a car you bought from them and you're paying money, it should be even. Like since it's coming from our tax dollars, it should be like if we're giving you that money, we shouldn't have to pay you on top of it for a car that we bought from you. Well, uh, I don't know how that would help stimulate the economy. Well, it would help because we wouldn't have to waste the money on 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 the cars, and we can you know. If we're paying like twelve, fourteen thousand dollars for a car, we can go and you know buy. But the purpose of the bailout, and uh, by the way, I was not in favor of the bailout. But the purpose of the bailout is just that to bail out the car company. Now, if all the people who own you know Chrysler suddenly don't have to pay for their Chryslers, well, Chrysler has that amount on their books as accounts receivable. Uh, what happens when they don't collect that? That'll put them out of business. 
Well, I never looked at it at that point. I just, you know, wanted to see what you would thought if I threw that out there. I think so, I think we shouldn't be bailing out car companies. And no, I, I think I, it was very anti-democratic because I think most Americans were against the bailout. Oh, I'm and the, fi too. the whole thing was set up so that the elected officials could pound their fist and say, oh, no, uh, we, you guys, you don't uh, keep your expenses in line. You fly corporate jets and blah, blah, blah. So we're not going to give you the bailout money. Then a guy who's not elected, Henry Paulson, the head of the Treasury, he says, well, we'll get the money from somewhere else. And that's what they're going to do. No, it's, it's the same thing they did with uh, Roger Clemens when they put him in the, on, you know, they brought him to Capitol Hill, and it was a big deal for nothing. I mean, have you heard anything ever since he left Cap ever since that? Well, you know? that that case is alive. Uh, that that is definitely alive. He's being investigated now, and uh, uh, you know, I think if Roger Clemens had not demanded that hearing, he'd be off scot free. Oh yeah, and uh, just to update you, AJ Burnett signed with the Yankees. I don't know if you've seen it. It just like happened. So they signed AJ Burnett and CC Sabathia. Wow, that's hardcore. Oh, as, as a Red Sox fan, I, I'm looking at Theo right now, wondering what he's going to do. But um, wow, that's that's hard. Good. Two of the biggest pitchers on the free agent market, if not the two biggest. Uh, and they're rumored to they want to go after Manny too. So if they do, uh, um, we're we're done. So uh, it, can you blow me up just in case they do get Manny? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. What is what is a Red Sox fan doing in San Francisco? No idea. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Robert on the Tom Likas show. What's happening, Tom? Not much, Robert. I have a, a fatherly advice to ask you, man. All right. So basically, uh, I was dating this girl for about six years, and uh, I broke up with her. Basically, we went our ways. Uh, I was pretty young at the time. I'm 25 now, and I've been pretty heartbroken about this girl. And uh, I just found out a couple of days ago that the guy who I was pouring my heart out to, my closest friend, was actually seeing my girl for the last six months. Well, that sucks because, as you know, on this program, it's pros, uh, pros before hoes. And uh, this is, he's never done anything like this to me or anything, and... It's just, you know, it, more than anything, it's disappointing. I don't care about the girl, you know? Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I imagine losing a friend is a lot harder than harder than losing some chick. Yeah, I mean, even though I was heartbroken about this girl, I mean, it's just ridiculous how... Did you talk to him? Did you tell him what you thought about that? I haven't told anybody. You're the first person I'm calling. Um, would you want to say something to him about that? Um, uh, I, I definitely will. It's just a matter of when... But How did you find out? Through another friend. Wow. Well, you should ask. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's not even true. Uh, from as far as I know, yeah, it is. I have no, good I... sources. And, it, and it, your it, friend it, hasn't called you since you broke up with your ex? No. We've been going out on trips and being best buds. Yeah. Well, all I can say, Robert, is, again, if you'd follow my instruction and not been in a relationship, you right. would not be so sad now. No, it's, it's, it's not even, it, it, it's not the relationship that's, that's, that's disappointing. It's just a friendship. No, no, I understand that. But the point is you wouldn't have had any feelings, and therefore, what would you care if you had banged somebody and then your friend banged them? But, but then again, I guess, in a way, it's a good thing because I'm realizing that maybe he's not a friend. Oh, there's no, <laughs> there's no doubt he violated the guy code in a big way, and uh, you need to let him know. Yeah, I definitely will. And but well, I would not recommend. I would not recommend revenge. I would not recommend physical violence. I would just say you're dead to me. Right. All right, Tom. Thank you. There'll always be more chicks, guys. There'll always be more chicks, but. Uh, your friends are few and far between. You can't afford to lose them. Right. Well, is it something that I can forgive him, or that's that's uh, that's in your heart? I'm not saying whether you should or shouldn't. Uh, it depends on whether you want to. But then again, do you think it's a rule that just shouldn't be broken? If it does, then see you later, kind of thing. I because how can you trust him in the future? Exactly.
Hang on a second here. Let me get uh, Chloe on the air. Chloe, what did you want to say to Robert? You need to grow a spine, man, and tell your bro what's up. If you, you shouldn't be having to talk to other friends about this. You need to take care of your business. And if he is doing that, dump him. Yeah, but at the same time, it, it, it's... It, it, it's not animosity that it feels more disappointment. So it's not that I need to grow some, you know, to to tell him what's up. I mean, I have no problem well, you, doing that. You sound like you're you're pretty torn up right now. Like you're about to cry right now. Like no, 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 not not at all. No, that's that's not the case at all. What's okay. what's, what's what's really bothering me is just the fact that you know, just a, a friend would do this to me, and you know, I'm 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 pretty forgiving guy, but at the same time, you know, I mean, I I think that well, what is he going to do if I tell him? Well, listen, any any friend of yours that would snag your woman away from you is no friend at all. So my suggestion to you is write him off. Robert, good luck to you. I uh, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you, Chloe, as well. Appreciate that. Let's say hello here to Guy on the Tom Likas show. Yo, Tom, what up, dude? Not hey, much, I want to say uh, I'm, I'm loving all the Metallica you're playing, dude. It's great. Um, and that guy that just called in needs to stop crying. If I was his friend, I'd punch him in the side of the head and tell him, shut up. Um, <laughs> uh, my question to you is, dude, I have a really good invention. Um, has to do with the autom automotive field. Um, I'm not sure how to produce this without someone stealing my idea. What would be your advice on how to get my invention going? I cannot make it in my garage or anywhere like that. I have to get someone to make it on a laser machine. So well, how would um, I do the, that the way I would do that is, step one, go to an attorney who specializes in this area. Yeah. Don't cheap out on it. If you think your idea has potential, do right. not cheap out and try to avoid hiring an attorney. Just do that right off the bat? Yes, and there are attorneys who specialize in this. And by the way, they'll tell you right off the bat if your idea is so unique right, or you're mistaken. Okay. And whether or not they can help you. All right. That works. Uh, I mean. So you want to find, and you live in California, you want to find an attorney whose specialty is that. And there are many. Okay, just like a patent attorney, trademark attorney, attorney who handles service marks. Okay. Uh, these are the kinds of attorneys you're looking for. Right on. Well, all right, dude. I appreciate the, uh, the, the time you're putting into this. And uh, can you blow me up? Yes, of course I can. Tom, Tom, Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Now with shorter commercial breaks. Shorter. Really short. If you tune out... You may not come back in time. That's how fast it is. My goodness. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Don't forget our Saturday show tomorrow, 2 until 6. 2 until 6. Tom Like is now six days a week on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. And if you can't hear us in Southern California, you can log on to blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button. And there you go. Emmanuel on the Tom Like is show. Wide open telephone. Tell him. How you doing, Tom? Great. Yeah, so I have a question for you, Tom. This is real interesting. I actually, um, I got laid off of my job uh, a few days earlier, uh, a few days ago, and um, when uh, I got laid off, I asked my uh, my manager, like, why did you lay me off? All the explanation he gave me was uh, uh, it just wasn't working out. And I asked him again, what, what do you mean it wasn't working out? He said it just wasn't working out. Well, that's uh, I couldn't ask anymore. I didn't want to stay in like a... You know, like an idiot. So I left, and um, he asked me to bring all my uniform clothes in, and then I just wanted your legal advice if I could go up on a lot. Well, first of all, only a lawyer can give legal advice, and I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, I understand. I was just uh, asking you. Yeah, uh, but when you opinion. say, "Can I give my legal advice?" I no. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> what would you do in my shoes, more or less? Well, because first of all, what I mean, were you the, were you the only person laid off? Yes, I right, was. So you were not laid off. You were fired. Yes, I was fired. Basically, well. Uh, when I first started there, I remember when um, when I first started with the company, I was uh, real fired up about the job. I knew, you know, from A to Z, you know, what to do. And, you know, I mean, I was a, started as a helper. And um, usually the guys, they would complain about me, like, 
working harder than them, and then it will make them look bad. Well, that could all be true, but keep in mind, you're an at-will employee. Yeah. So they don't, they don't really have to give you an explanation. Yeah. Now, if you can prove you were discriminated against because of your race or your ethnicity or your gender, uh, if you have a handicap or a particular religion and you think they're discriminated for that reason, well, then you have a case. But uh, other than that, you don't have a contract, you don't belong to a union, uh, they are not required to keep you uh, one minute. Yeah, I understand. Um, I kind of felt like they, uh, they they let me go for their own personal reasons. They But they have every right to do that. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was... That's what I wanted to know because, I mean, if I, I've heard... I've, I've read a couple of times that uh, if, uh, empl if, if my employers are involving their own personal... You know, their own personal feelings into into the business... They have know. a right to do that. Yeah. Oh, really? What they don't have a right to do is to discriminate... They don't have a right to fire you because of, uh, you know, your gender or your race or your ethnicity or if you have a handicap, uh, uh, because of your religious beliefs, uh, and in California, if you're gay or lesbian. Okay. All well, right, but, would... but if they just decided they, they, they're they tired of having you around, uh, that may sound unfair to you, but it's legal. By the way, what kind of job is this? Uh, I'm a doorman, sir. I... All right. I and uh, uh, is there a shortage of jobs in that field? There's a, it's been getting slow for a, for a bit. Um, there's a lot of competition out there, so uh, it's been slow at a lot of door companies as well. So, well, yeah. they could very well have hired somebody who makes less than you to replace you. Yeah, I believe so. And um, this, uh, during my job, I mean, I, I remember I got injured, and um, during that time, I was being harassed by everybody there. I was being harassed and into you know made fun of you know what I mean because I got hurt and then I was just a personality and then uh, I heard rumors of um, the manager um, threatening to fire me and yeah you know I mean I just thought that was like a uh, like they involved their own personal you know I mean their own personal feelings and you know there's a lot of harassment going on and then well and, uh, you know I, you can always talk to a labor attorney yeah. <clears throat> but, um yeah I mean when I got injured it was just a whole different ball game and then. Uh, the, the manager thought I was just like, I'm too responsible because I got injured. Well, I was like, you know what? I even told him, I was like, you know what? Um, many people get injured in this type of, in this type of job. I mean, I got injured. You know what I mean? I made a mistake. I made my mistake. And, um, you know what I mean? I hope you, I hope you know well, that. This is a very involved story. All I can tell you is if you really think you were done wrong, uh, talk to a labor attorney about it and see if you have a case. I tend to think you don't, but I'm not an attorney. Rick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Uh, I um I wanted to ask you um this digital TV switch. Do you know how much it's costing? Like, if it's going to cost us the uh, the taxpayers? Oh yes, it's going to cost us the taxpayers. It definitely is. Do you because know how we're much? we're buying we're buying those boxes for the uh, for the few losers who still have uh, non digital TVs. <laughs> but um. The way I see it, though, if you wanted to step up from the antenna TV, you would do digital cable or satellite, right? Well, yes, uh, but there are, believe it or not, there are still people out there who use rabbit ears. Uh, I wouldn't want to know them, but they're out there. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you're right. And I, was, uh, I wanted to say, I read that punchline on that Thanksgiving joke, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I'm glad you liked it. Can you take me out with a bong hit in Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat to my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing great. Uh, I just called. I met this girl a few weeks ago at a bar, and then she called me up, wanted me to hang out with her. So I show up at the bar, and she's just drunk already, just on the verge of blackout drunk. I get there, and every guy is buying her shots, and and then she starts telling me how she made out with the the singer and the and the band a couple weeks ago, and I'm like. Okay, that's awesome. She started. She sits on my lap, starts making out with me, 
I'm pretty sure I got the deal sewn up and it can take her out of there and be the one banging her that night. But she starts bouncing around the bar. It's like, you know what? Screw this. I have no reason to put up with this crap. And uh, I leave her in the bar. And she calls me the next day. She's like, why did you leave me? I'm like, I didn't come down there to be your babysitter. She's like, well, what if something happened to me? I'm like, you're a grown-up. You've made your own decisions. I didn't buy you the shots. I didn't get you drunk. I would have no responsibility and feel bad. I'd feel bad for you, but it's not my fault. She just blew off a shirt. There's too much drama. A girl is just insane like that. I don't understand I why well, a girl you, would think you, it's my problem if she gets blackout drunk and someone does something to her. It's, it's yeah. not your problem, and uh, not, you, I, you'd even buy the drinks. I didn't. You know, and like I'm like, let's go. She she had one more beer in front of her. You know, she's 110 pounds, five eight. Like she you can't handle her liquor, and people are just buying her shots all over the place. And like, stop. You like, why? You don't have to drink it. She's like, uh, I want to finish my beer. I'm like, all right, peace out. I'm going. And left her there. The next day, she's lost her cell phone. She's calling me like, why did you leave me? Can't believe you just left me like that. I'm like. Yeah, what are you, her girlfriend? What are you, her gay friend? I'm like, I don't You did the right thing. That's what I said. And she's like, well, do you not care about me? I'm like, maybe the problem is I I care too much. Because if I continue to babysit you, I'm just enabling this kind of behavior, and I'm not helping you at all in your life. And she blew up at me on that one. Yeah, I would have told her the truth. I don't give a rat's ass about you, you whore. (laughs) Yeah, right. <laughs> I miss you down here in San Diego, man. I'm, I'm driving to LA right now on your show. I, I flipped through my LA stations and you came on. I was like, oh, finally. But you got to get back down on the air. Well, James, call your local station, especially some of the ones who have very low ratings, because we have very high ratings. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at. BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. We're on tomorrow, 2 to 6. It's the Tom Likas Show.